Bien, aquí hoy vamos a practicar por este examen de AP Spanish Language. Welcome. As you're coming in, let me know where you're, where you're, where you're coming from in the chat. If you're joining us afterwards, if you're watching the recording of this, let us know what questions you have. We're going to be answering your questions all through the evening. The AP Spanish language exam is tomorrow, and we are here to help however we can. So I'm real quick. I'm just going to make sure that we are all set on the live stream um, service and that everything is nice <clears throat> and clear. If you've got questions, you can let me know about these. Uh, as I said in the chat. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of things that I think are going to be really helpful to you. Um, first, and let me close this down. I want to show you the other videos on our channel. If what we're providing for you is not specific enough, if you're looking for something else, remember, um, we have a whole playlist for AP Biology if you're here for that subject um, that you can look uh, on these videos with, for AP Bio Penguins. That, of course, is tomorrow. And then our, our, there's our AP Spanish language playlist. This is available for you uh, with reviews of, this is hours and hours of review, breaking down especially the oral presentation, the cultural comparison, all of that in, um, information is here because that 2020 exam that we did live streams for was all about the audio. So we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on writing on multiple choice today. I'm gonna give you a tour of the 2021 free response questions, um, but we have all sorts of breakdowns of this information on our channel. So definitely check that out. For the purposes of our session today, we're gonna to be working from this document. I'm gonna pop this into the chat of our session. So this is uh, the 2019, uh, rather the 2021 AP Spanish FRQs, the free response questions, they are released and real. Some of you may have seen them before. I'm gonna tell you how to think about them from a test prep point of view. And I hope that that's really valuable for you. Um, also, if you like this video, if you like our channel, press that like button, subscribe to our channel. Um, we have resources in about 15 AP subjects right here for free on our channel. So let's get into the 2021 FRQs. And let me know in the chat, have you all seen these before? Um, these are um, resources that, again, are all available to you for free on the College Board's website and are the actual questions students saw last year. The exam for 2022, and I want to clarify this, is going to be the normal full-length exam. It will be only administered paper and pencil. So you're going to do the multiple choice with pencil. You're going to do the free response in pen, bodígrafo, and you're going to be writing as you go. You're going to cross out um, the parts of your free response question that, that you don't like. There's no uh, virtual or digital copy of this. Um, and I see, oh, it's great to see Sean, a bunch of people who've been on our channel here for a while. Um, and so thank you all for, um, for joining and for liking this video. So when you get into the free response, I'm gonna leave multiple choice to the side, when you get into the free response, you're gonna get one hour and 28 minutes for part A, um, and, or rather for this whole section, and you're gonna have one hour and 10 minutes for the writing part. So in fact, what I'll do, I'm gonna take you all to this document. You might've seen it before. It's the course and exam description. You can always check this document. This is almost 200 pages. It explains what the exam is. It's presented by the College Board, the people who write this exam. So part one, the multiple choice, the one I kind of just skipped over in total is about half of your exam score. You see that right here, that's 50% of your scores, those multiple choice questions. And then the free response is the other half that is split equally across these four tasks. 15 minutes, you're gonna to get to write an email, one eighth of your score. 55 whole big long minutes for one eighth of your score, the argumentative essay. You're gonna have the spoken part of the exam, which is 18 minutes. And again, back in 2020, during the early days of the pandemic, the exam was only 18 minutes long, really. It was an 18 minute long, uh, basically spoken only part of the exam. It was this 25% was the entire score. Here, you're in it for the marathon, you're in it for the long haul. So we're starting with the free response part, part two of this exam. And we're gonna start with the email reply. This is something we've covered in that playlist that I mentioned on our channel. Um, again, that's right here on AP Spanish language on this channel. So these instructions are something you can definitely look, definitely look at the night before the test because they're always the same in English, a la izquierda, and in, in Espanol, a la derecha. So you're gonna write an email message. You have 15 minutes to read the message and write your reply. This is not the world's longest essay. It's not even an essay, it's an email. So you're gonna follow the conventions of an email. Now I'm gonna really zoom in on this because I want you to see what you gotta do. There's a checklist hidden in these instructions. Learn them tonight, 
and execute on them on the test tomorrow. Your reply should include a greeting and a closing. This is template standard stuff, right? It should respond to all questions and requests. So if he is pidiendo información dentro del contexto de email, you need to responder con respuestas específicas that indicate that you really understand what's going on. In your reply, you should also ask for more details about something mentioned in the message. You said X, tengo una pregunta, and you, you, you offer that question. Also, you should use a formal form of address. So you, when you're writing these emails, you want to make sure you have that estimado señor Sánchez. Right, and that's what's going to um, uh, help you all out. So I'm just seeing in the chat, great, lots of positivity um, and lots of, a couple quick questions. Will this be posted afterwards? Yes, we're gonna add this. It's already been added to our playlist, this playlist right here, where we posted all of our previous live streams for AP Spanish language. I'm also gonna point out, we're going live again for AP World History, and we have resources in all these subjects. There's hundreds of videos that we've got available. We're right now, for those of you just joining, in the 2021 free response questions for AP Spanish language. We are going over these instructions. They are always the same. They give you the rubric, basically. Include a greeting and a closing. Respond to all the questions and requests. Ask for more details and use a formal form of address. Okay, then we get the actual email. It says, it's going to give you, always at the top, este tema curricular. What part of the course does it come from? If you're wondering what it is, let me show you. So if we go back to the CED, the course and exam description, and um, forgive me, I'm gonna go all, scroll all the way back up. You're gonna see that there are six main course themes that structure the Spanish course. Your textbook might be different from a textbook in a different state or a different county or down the street. So because people are learning Spanish at different levels from different textbooks in different countries, they haven't published like a vocabulary list. What vocabulary should I know? There isn't a list, right? But there are six themes that help us understand this course. So um, I'm going to just point those out to you real quick. Um, and actually, well, this is one way of, of showing you how these overlap, at least. One is families and communities, personal and public identities, beauty and aesthetics, science and technology, contemporary life, global challenges. If those sound really broad, it's because they are broad. They're really um, kind of trying to encompass specific aspects, but certainly families and communities is something that has its own list of vocabulary, its own list of cultural dynamics. Okay, so we know that this is about las identidades personales y públicas, privadas y públicas, pers personal and public identities. Okay, introducción. Este mensaje electrónico es del profesor Luis Casillas, maestro del Colegio Internacional Potosino. Has recibido este mensaje porque trabajas como editor del periódico de tu escuela y has aceptado trabajar en un proyecto de colaboración con el periódico estudiantil en su escuela de en Bolivia. De su escuela en Bolivia. So, summarize that for me in English in the chat right now. If you're on your phone, if you're on a computer, go to the chat right now and give me just a quick summary of what this is about. While you're doing that, about this little section right here, you're giving me a one sentence version. I'm just gonna check to see if there's any other questions here. And yes, the shout out to Sophia who's in our chat, making sure that um, questions are being answered. Um, and let's see, um, great. Yes, thank you, Sophia, if you like by spade accent. Um, so, Great, and that's a great question that Manisha is asking in the chat. Would, you, would I recommend uh, memorizing an intro and conclusion that can work? You don't necessarily need to, it might be too late to do that, but it could be valuable to think about like, what are those template responses that everyone's using? We're gonna take a look at that, actually at like what was successful on the 2021 exam in just a few minutes. Um, yeah, so there's also clearly confused is making a good point. The six topics kind of cover everything. I think only a couple of those topics kind of have specific words around them. I would say maybe families and communities, beauty and aesthetics, science and technology. There's like words about social media and internet and those sort of things that can help. But ahora es uh, martes el 10 de mayo a las 7 por la tarde but in, uh, or in the evening. Um, on the night before the exam, at least where I am on the East Coast. So it's probably too late to try to learn a bunch of vocabulary. You want to focus on common mistakes that people make and how you can avoid them. Um, okay, so back to where we are. I'm looking for these instructions here. Um, 
And yeah, and actually to your question of native speakers, you wanna be focusing on the format and structure of the exam because you can trust your own bilingualism to, to help you through this. So yeah, I'm seeing Kareen, Alexander, Kara. Um, these are all great answers. Emily, Annalise, um, Annalise. So these are great, Brittany. Um, great summaries of what, what the task is. You don't want to spend the exam translating like this to yourself, but you do want to spend the exam talking to yourself. You want to say to yourself, wait a second, what actually am I being asked to do, right? So this is from this guy, Professor Luis Casillas. He comes from this school. You've received this message because you work as the editor of a newspaper of your school, and you've accepted uh, to work on this project, this collaboration project with the student newspaper of their school, uh, of his school in Bolivia. So he gives you, estimado editor, le escribo. Okay, and then we get all of this. Very quickly, I want you to read this and I'm gonna give you about 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And I want you to summarize in the chat, two sentences, what he is talking about. And then we're gonna look at the specific tasks that he's asking you to do. So. Your task right now, go to that chat, go to this, read this, and go to the chat and summarize it for me. Alrighty, we're getting some of the first responses. I'm gonna give you some time. Don't worry if you're behind, I'll give you another minute or two. And Mia is asking a really great question. Are we gonna do the cultural comparison? Yes, briefly, but I do wanna spend a minute and uh, point out that we will be, in fact, let me just refresh that. We will be going, uh, we have videos in our AP Spanish language playlist right here that break down the spoken parts of the exams. I would actually recommend one, two, three, these bottom four in particular cover that material. Um, so hopefully that's really valuable um, for you. So, um, and in fact, I wanna say, I'm gonna pull up, there might be another playlist too that I wanna show um, that has this information. So let's see. I've got um, here um, great responses. What a great group here. Um, and let me just real quick. Yes. Um, yeah, Eve, he's writing about the collab. Uh, students can write in English and Spanish. It's bilingual. Uh, Alexander, he wants us to include our opinions as youth, what the main problems are. Uh, does your word spelling have to be perfect, Alexandra? Absolutely not. We see, we're gonna see in some of the student responses that they are not perfect and that's perfectly okay. No AP exam requires perfection from you. They require you know, enough control over the material, enough uh, clarity that it doesn't get in the way. So grammar doesn't matter until it really gets in the way of the reader's ability to understand what's actually happening. Great responses here from IDK, lol. Do accents matter and do points get taken off for not putting correct accents? A few accent mistakes are not gonna be an issue as I pile up and show that there's like a breakdown in the Spanish, that's when you can start seeing that that come up. Okay, um, uh, Francis, he's telling you he wants the newspaper to be bilingual and he wants to share culture. Um, he wants to know my ideas. So what's, again, I wanna clarify something. I'm not telling you all that you should be translating this as you go through the exam, but you must talk to yourself and say, what is this person saying? 
What must I do? Remember what we said, the clue on this is all in this description. You need to give me a greeting and a closing. They can be kind of formulaic, just as Manisha was asking earlier, that you need to respond to all the questions and requests. Can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? Can you send me this? You need to respond to each one of those and you need to ask a couple of more details. So here, le agradeciera Víamos que contestara las siguientes preguntas para determinar la información que podríamos incluir en la publicación. Por primero, ¿qué temas de interés general para los jóvenes podríamos incluir en esta primera edición conjunta y por qué? ¿Qué aspectos en nuestra vida académica en Bolivia les, interesía, les interesarían a los estudiantes de su colegio? You've got to answer those two questions. And then let's see, were there any other requests? Um, we got two questions. Any other requests? I'm looking around. That's what they said. So I'm going to focus on my response on estimado profesor Casillas. Muchas gracias. Por, muchas gracias por este, uh, you know, wonderful carta that you sent me. I want to answer your questions. Y tengo dos más. And you ask those questions atentamente and you put your name. So um, this is really great. And I'm seeing a bunch of great comments and questions for what we've just done. So zooming out, the email reply is incredibly straightforward, sencillo, as we say in Spanish. On the left, in English, and here on the right in Spanish, are your instructions for what you have to do. This is only a 15 minute long task, yet it counts for one eighth of your score. And one thing I wanna show you here is that on the College Board's website, and I'll put this in the chat, this is access, I'm gonna type this as access to uh 2021 files okay college board has put this out for free for us and we can see samples and commentary on this the email task so here's the rubric for it again it you're going to be scored on the overall quality of your response is it strong five or poor one and then we're going to see here's an example this is uh Okay, scraggly, scraggly handwriting. Estimado Profesor Luis Casillas, me alegro y te agradezco, spelled wrong, por su ser parte de este proyecto. Este tipo de disposición, spelled wrong, no accent, será especial. This person is like allergic to accent marks. Por las perspectivas de los alumnos de los dos escuelas, no, colegios, aquí escuelas, Además, sin acento, dar una plataforma, una, plata, una plataforma es importante para enfrentar y solucionar las, no, los problemas de, be, los, no, las problemas de nuestras comunidades en relación a las preguntas. So, like, right there, telling the person, I'm going to answer your questions greater. You've got to give me the points for this. Creo que unos temas de interés deben ser el minimizar el uso de drogas en el colegio y confrontar el uso de internet para razones criminales. Estos pueden ser importantes porque puede, pueden ayudar a que nuestros colegios pueden ser un promotador. So there's a little bit of Spanglish happening here, a little bit of like making up some Spanglishy words. Let's see what the graders do with this. Y de poror estas actividades en nuestras comunidades Unos aspectos de la vida académica en Bolivia que interesan a los jóvenes son los deportes escolares como el fútbol del colegio y también el uso de las redes sociales para promocionar organizaciones de la del escuela. Solo tengo una pregunta. ¿Cuándo empezaremos este proyecto? Espero una respuesta atentamente and they cross out the person's name. Let's look at how that response was scored. Uh, they gave this response a four, a four out of five. So not a perfect response. And let's see, what was it, what were the graders saying about this person's capacity to complete the task? It was generally appropriate, provides most of the required information, some errors that do not impede comprehensibility. I didn't struggle to understand the student. I saw some missing accents. It, I wanted to correct some of the A's and O's to get the things lined up correctly, but okay. There was a broad range of vocabulary, general control of grammar and syntax, so kind of working down the list here, generally consistent use of register, basic control. So the person was not perfect, but the person 
got a score that was nearly perfect, got a four out of five on this task. So really, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, that, um, yeah, so I'm just looking real quick. Um, so yeah, and that's, by, as you, by the way, Manisha, everyone, as you have questions, post those questions in the chat. If you like this video, press that like button. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We've got a whole playlist of Spanish language resources available for you. And in fact, one thing I want to check real quick is um, we actually have, um, there are, I want to see if I've got it here real quick. Um, okay, I'm going to... Yeah, no. Um, sorry, just checking one thing. So to zoom out from where we are, we're in the free response section of the 2021 AP Spanish language exam. So this is the 2021 exam. I'm going to pop this link in the chat for you. And we've just focused on the email reply. Pretty straightforward, not too scary. Get the job done. You don't have to be perfect to get a really great score. Then we get to something a lot scarier. And that is 55-minute behemoth called the argumentative essay. You will write an argumentative essay to submit to a Spanish writing contest. The essay topic is based on the three accompanying sources, three, which present different view viewpoints on the topic and include both print and audio material. So now we're mixing that like mixing skill of reading and uh, listening, which can be very overwhelming for people. First, you're going to have six minutes to read the essay topic and the printed material. So there'll be two of those. Afterwards, you will hear the audio material twice. You should take notes while you listen. Then you will have 40 minutes to prepare and write your essay. 40 minutes, so it's 15 minutes of kind of setup, 40 minutes of writing. A key question for you to ask yourself is, what kind of a writer are you when you're listening to stuff? For me, I have two different strategies. The one that I tend to do is sort of like the first time through, I'll kind of just listen to the thing. Don't take, write anything down. Absorb, be like, okay, this is the topic. This is the main idea. The second time I'm scribbling notes for myself. I've also reversed that. And sometimes just instinctively, I'll just scribble stuff down the first time. Then I'll put that down and just really try to like listen while, the, while it's talking because I just sometimes absorb and think more clearly. Let me know in the chat. Do you tend to take notes diligently when you're listening on the Spanish exam on the first round? that you hear it the second round, both times or neither, right? If they're repeating it twice, um, it can be overwhelming. So um, so let's see, and I'm just looking at, uh, yes, you. Do, there's a great question that Brittany was asking there that in the sample response we were looking at a minute ago, you do wanna make sure that um, you actually put your, your name in there for the sake of student privacy, they blocked it off before they published it. Um, but that, those are some great questions. Um, and Maria was asking a question, how did he get a four on that? Yeah, how do you get a four out of five? Um, and um, that that is because the student was most of the way there, but we saw a few errors and a few details that will were left out. Um, Margo is saying, I take notes on both rounds, but to fill in info, I didn't get the first time. That's really interesting. Both, I say, listen the first time. Yeah, Karen, Karine, that's really great advice. Um, but I think one thing I'll encourage all of you, if you've been practicing a mode, of taking this exam, definitely do that mode on the test tomorrow. Don't try to shake things up. If you have no mode and you've put no thought into this strategy, tonight is the night to kind of lay out a plan for yourself and stick with it. Um, great. Uh, and you were saying first time is general notes for me, second time specific words and sentences. I love that strategy. Um, and Sasmit, you're asking about whether the test is on a computer. It's only going to be paper and pencil, paper and pen this year in 2022. Okay, so let's just very quickly take a look here. We have our tema curricular, which is la vida contemporánea, Anya, sorry, contemporánea, uh, which is contemporary life. Primero tiene seis minutos para leer el tema del ensayo, la fuente número uno y la fuente número dos. Tema del ensayo. ¿Quién se beneficia más? ¿Las personas que hacen el trabajo voluntario o las que reciben la ayuda? Who benefits more? The people who do volunteer work or the people who receive the help of volunteer work? An interesting question. We would just assume that the people um, who receive the volunteer work would benefit more, but perhaps the beneficial, the beneficiary of that volunteer work is in fact the volunteer him or herself. So it's an interesting idea. The first source we're going to get is um, from 2015 on a website. 
and we get five reasons that I hate volunteering um, or volunteers. So, um, and then the person ex uh, explains, you learn little and badly, the, um, you know, raising costs on, on things, the, the um, yeah, let's just see, uh, yeah, working for free, like the whole thing, he, this, uh, this, as you get a chance to look at this later, we don't have time to look at it now, we'll sort of break down five ways that volunteerism is kind of toxic. Um, it's an interesting kind of counterpoint to what most people think about volunteering, and that's sort of source number one. Then we're going to see a graphic, a visual. Here, I'll take a look at this. I want to just show you a technique for this. Um, yes, by the way, um, just a quick uh, point. The people are asking about uh, for the oral part, yes, you're going to shift over to devices and technology. I will say it's kind of unfortunate that some of the technology around like doing um, the oral presentation can be very, um, what's the word, primitive. Um, and that can be really frustrating for students because it's like there's like 500 people speaking in the background, which is why, Sean, I've been doing the listening prompts with reverbed, reverbed audio to simulate the echoes in the gym. Um, you know, so yeah, and that's that's right. Um, and let me just see real quick, playing it on a speaker, exactly. So I would, uh, one thing that's important is making sure that you don't get too bogged down in the bogged downness of the testing experience, just kind of go with the flow. I had heard um, from a teacher for AP English Language, which is an exam today, that her students were only given two hours for the exam, not two hours 15 for the free response, which is a disaster. Um, but just roll with the punches. If something goes absolutely haywire in your exam, the technology isn't working, there is a makeup date but let's cross that bridge and we get there. Um, okay, so this is source number two of the argumentative essay, the second task of the free response section, the final writing task before we get into the spoken part of the exam. And this says, ¿Qué voluntariado hacen los chilenos? What kind of volunteer activities do people do in Chile? 28% do community work. Uh, 20 do church-related work or religious work. Uh, helping the disabled and the elderly and the sick. Uh, actually, no, ancianos is the elderly. And here we have the enfermos and the personas discapacitadas. We have 10% are doing childcare variations of, of supporting children. 10% do construction work as volunteer. 7% teach classes. Asesorías o capacitación profesional, so like pro bono work and entretenimiento, which is entertainment. So we get a variety of different work. We see that the majority, or rather the largest stake, are the, the tasks that people do on the left. You have to think very, very clearly, how might you use this source in conversation with this source, in conversation with the oral source? So, um, and it says, Esta grabación trata de los adolescentes que ofrecen para trabajar como voluntarios. Voluntarios, el informe original titulado Jóvenes Voluntarios, Promotores de la Paz y el Desarrollo en Colombia fue publicada por Radio Naciones Unidas. La grabación dura aproximadamente dos minutos y medio. So it's a two and a half minute long audio. You're going to listen to it twice from the United Nations. Um, and those would be your three sources. One huge mistake that people make on the AP Spanish language exam is they don't spend enough time synthesizing all this stuff and planning it out. You have 40 minutes to plan and write your essay. Let me know in the chat. How many minutes? Um, how many minutes are you uh, going to spend planning your essay versus writing it? Forty minutes. Is it ten minutes planning, thirty minutes writing, five minutes planning, thirty-five minutes writing, two minutes planning, thirty-eight minutes writing, fifteen minutes planning? What is what is that breakdown for you? Type that in the chat while I take a look um, at all of this. So let's just see. Yeah, and I think Karine is making a point about sort of this connection um, about an AP Lang argument essay. There are some ways that these, these responses, like synthesizing three sources, um, the, the kind of open-ended laying out an essay are, you know, AP Spanish language and AP English language are pretty similar. At the same time, there's audio, um, there's a spoken part. It's looking at those four modes. Remember, the, the exam is going to mix reading, writing, listening and speaking, the four main tasks of language. So a lot of you do seven planning, five minutes, 
uh, General Grievous does 30 seconds planning and then you only live once. Bravo. Um, 10 minutes, five. So this is a good question to yourself. What, I'm what I hope I'm doing, I'm not teaching you a year of Spanish. I'm not making you bilingual. That cannot be done. But what I hope I'm doing, everyone, is making you ask yourself, what kind of test taker am I? We're all different. We all have different abilities and different levels of competence and different kinds of test anxiety. I want you to embrace that. So actually, I want you to go into the chat. This is corny, but do it with me. I want you to go in the chat and say, I am fine just the way I am. We're going to do it. Self-help. I am fine just the way I am. We're going to make you the best version of yourself tomorrow. You're going to make the best choices you're going to make tomorrow. But I am fine just the way I am. Because if you go in saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not like that student who speaks three languages. I didn't start early enough. It's Senorita Martinez's fault. Like, stop it. You are fine just the way you are. And you go in with that confidence and you do the best work that you can possibly do. And that's what matters. Don't worry about anything. Look at that. I'm fine. And then Luis, do we need a conclusion for the essay? Not officially. I mean, yeah, obviously like, right. Seven paragraphs if you can. But um, okay, an AC like, I'm fine, question mark, just the way I am, scared emoji. Um, you're fine just the way you are. Look at all these wonderful people validating their own experience and intelligence and voice. Trust your voice. Go in and be an imperfect version of yourself. You're going to be better that way than trying to be some perfect quadrilingual polyglot genius. Um, I, you know, look, I started Spanish when I was in, when I was 13 years old. I did it for five years. Then I went to college. I majored in it. Then I studied it some more in graduate school. Then I moved to Spain for a year. Then I published an article in Spanish. And then I watch movies in Spanish. And I listen to music in Spanish. I chat, charla, charlando en español. I love it. I've been doing it for a long time. And it's like a life journey that you're on. And I hope that, um, that this is something that, yeah, an AC light. Listen, grammar and syntax will be the end of me manana. You're going to be fine manana because you're fine just the way you are. Let's take a look at this, this spoken part. Again, I yo insisto that you take a look at my little playlist here, which goes over. Here's one on writing, but we also break down multiple times, practicing, listening to these prompts here. This is a great task list for you when our, when our session is over. So remember what you're going to be doing. You're going to begin um, with the same the same instructions every single time on the spoken part. You're going to be switching equipment. It's going to be like dorky headphones maybe and thing, and it's going to be awkward and there's noise in the room. Um, but so follow the instructions very carefully. You don't want to mess up this. You're going to have one minute to read a preview of the conversation. Then the conversation will begin. It'll be super fake. Like, hola, yo quiero hablar contigo de este tema de... Familias in Peru. Tienes una familia? Like what? Like, okay, fine. Uh, like, yeah, see. Um, so the, anyway, you have 20 seconds to record your response. A question people have is like, should I fill up the space? Ideally, yes, but not with tonteria. You want to make sure that you actually have like something substantive to say. So you can say, hay dos razones. Or, uh, la primera cosa que quiero la segunda cosa, just sort of set up a structure where you're counting things and it can sometimes propel your answer forward. Um, but it's not that simple, right? You have an introduction. This is a conversation with Alejandra. She's a Colombian friend that studies in your school. You're going to participate in this conversation because you have accepted to help her plan her next vacation to the United States or through the United States. So she greets you and asks your opinion. You greet her and respond with details. These kind of look the same every year, right? You're gonna react with your response and ask another bit of advice or she's gonna ask another thing. You respond with details, continues the conversation, details. She asks a question, you reject that idea and explain why. So rechaza is important, right? For rechazar being like, no. And then she reacts to your question and asks another one and you respond. One thing you mustn't do tomorrow, mañana por la mañana, when you are tomando este examen, is freak out if one of these responses goes sideways. You're being graded on the whole thing. And when you listen to the samples, you'll hear people go, yeah, nah, ha, right? And it's just like super awkward and part of it, but they recover as they pick up. So what you can't do, like when, when just like bits of spanglishy noise freeze out of your mouth, 
you're going to stay calm and just focus on that next part, recover strong, and it will help upgrade your score. Then finally, and again, I've got this in the playlist with the full description that I want you to watch when this is over, you're going to have the cultural comparison part. So here we have families and communities. And the question was, this is, I love this question so much, porque en España, which is my um, región del mundo hispano hablante que te sea familiar, that part that I know in España, la cena empieza a las 10, a las 11. I've been kept up by like children's birthday parties that are going to like 1230 at night. So um, this is pretty crazy. But anyway, this, you're gonna have four minutes to read the presentation topic and two minutes to record your presentation. The test prep question I'm asking all of you tonight is this, do you write an adequate plan? Are you confident in your ability to produce an outline you can really use for um, your, your oral presentation? Or do you write too much or too little? How confident are you? Go to the chat and let me know. Um, the, okay, I say, my teacher pronounces the H in hola, hola. Um, so yeah, and I'm looking at, real quick at this, but I want, to, I want to know from all of you, do you have confidence in your capacity in four minutes to produce an outline that really fuels your two minute long oral presentation? That two minute long presentation, it might fall short by 10 or 20 seconds. That's fine. Very successful answers are a little bit shorter. Obviously very short is gonna be a problem. Um, sometimes bilingual speakers, native heritage speakers, native speakers will say things like, well, I could just go in there and I'm, I can talk for two minutes, but they actually didn't read the question very carefully and didn't respond to it fully. And even though their accent's great and their speed is great and the quality and unity of their Spanish is very pretty, it lacks that full response that's necessary. So make sure if you're super confident about the way you speak and that you've been speaking Spanish since you were three years old, that you are doing the hard work of really answering this question. How do food schedules, right? The, or the, at the times at which you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner affect the, the lives of the people. So it's not just like, isn't it crazy that in Spain they ate dinner at 10? It's like, how does that affect their life? Well, they sleep in later and they have siesta al uh, mediodía. They compare the effect of these schedules with a region of the Spanish speaking world with which you are familiar with the effect in one that your community or another one. In your presentation, you can refer to what you've studied, lived through, observed, et cetera. So that's really significant. Um, and let's see, um, I usually take the extra minute to plan, right? I decay, lol, you're a native speaker and you get nervous, that's totally okay. Um, it, it's, it's part of, we're all gonna be nervous. There's a certain level of test anxiety, but you're fine just the way you are and that's what you're gonna grab onto tomorrow. Um, Margo, you're saying you feel like you write too much. So Margo shared something really important in the chat. If you know that you're kind of doing it wrong tonight, figure out a way to do it right tomorrow. And that means telling yourself, disciplining yourself to say, you know what? I actually, I know this about myself. I write too much. I'm going to try to do that a little bit less. Um, great. And then let me just take a look. I'm reading really great responses. By the way, if you're joining, I'm John from Marco Learning. We are looking at the 2021 free response questions. It's sort of right there at the top of the um, uh, of the kind of in the URL. I'm just going to put this back in the chat for everyone's um, benefit here. So this is 21 A. AP questions, great. Um, yeah, and Ellie's asking a really great question here. Is it okay to mention multiple Spanish speaking communities in the cultural comparison in which should we stick to one? One, because look at the prompt. It says, en una comunidad. You're gonna get bogged down if you're like, let me talk about Bolivia, let me talk about Peru, let me talk about Spain, talk about one. You can get more specific. Por ejemplo, en Madrid, la capital de España, la cena empieza normalmente a las 10, a las 11, y los restaurantes, and you just see I'm just flowing into Madrid, un restaurante que se llama San Celoni, or un restaurante en la Plaza de Paja en Madrid, que me encanta mucho, cierra al, al medianoche, and just sort of grabbing with uh, all of that information. Now, there's so much more to say, everyone. What I want to do with you all is take a quick tour again of, and forgive me, I'm going to go back to kind of page one here. And this is the course and exam description. This is the official material put out by the college board. This is what the exam is like. And when we go to the exam format, 
This is what you're facing tomorrow. Multiple choice questions. You don't need to be perfect on this part either. You're going to work with print text, which is this part right here for the first uh, 40 minutes, 30 questions, a little bit over a minute per question. This lets you flip around, move around. Then you're in a section where you have 35 minutes, but some listening to do, 55, which is print and audio text combined with audio text. You're going to be moving around. Then you get a break. The writing, short break, kind of an audio switch over to this final part. So it's pretty intense. It's pretty overwhelming. What I'd like to do for all of you right now is take a minute to answer questions that you might have in the chat. Um, and again, this it's very important that you take a minute and look at the other hours of review that we have done here on our channel um, that can help hopefully help you get set up. So um, let me run over to the chat real quick and see what we've got. Um, Tanzi, you're, you're saying, can we make up information about a community or cultural comparison we don't know? No, don't do that. Um, I would say if you're, if you feel like I don't have one, like, what are you talking about? I don't know anything about Bolivia or Spain. Maybe do a little bit of that work even tonight. Um, and think in your class, have you done anything related to film, television, um, things that you know about that can help you set all of this, this up? Um, yeah, you want to, um, uh, focus on getting around that 75%. That's great um, for to get a five. Orpix, you're, you have the question, how do I stop freezing in the personal conversation? I think if this is something I talk a lot, a lot about on this channel, which is game theory, right? The idea that if you go for perfection, you'll often fall on your face and feel terrible. If you go for something lower, that's even better. So actually, I want you to all go to the chat. Another corny, like affirmative, affirmative thing. We do a lot of like affirmation therapy here at Marco Learning. I want you to go to the chat and I want you to say, I'm not going to get all the points tomorrow. So I will not get all of the points tomorrow. I will not get all of the points tomorrow. You're going to get stuff wrong. You can even type that. I'm going to get stuff wrong because going into the exam and knowing that you're going to fall short, go into the exam, knowing that you're going to leave points on the floor. Like that's actually very liberating because so much of what we do in school is like, I've got to get a hundred. I got to get an A. I got a 91. I got an 81. I got a 71. I'm falling apart. 81 is amazing on this exam. Right. And that's what you're looking for. Um, and some random guy, which is your name, how will the speaking portion work? Again, check out the videos that go over this. This is how you're going to be speaking into um, the microphone and recording all this. But remember, it's only a quarter of your score. Look at all this. Look at all this uh, wonderful affirmation coming in in the chat. Um, yeah, Alexander, you're asking about the recording devices and whether or not that's something that's actually going to be like under control tomorrow. And it will be. They're going to help you with this. Um, the separation between the writing and speaking, I, I don't remember exactly how long it is, but there is time to switch over from pen and booklet over to devices. So that can be, depending on how your proctor administers it, that can get a little clunky. Um, and for those of you just joining, I'm John from Marco Learning. We're about to wrap this session up, but I'm going to point you again to the playlist on our channel. Well, this video is on it for AP Spanish. You can watch us go through each part of the exam, especially the spoken part. Um, so... I want to see real quick, I'm going to scroll back up um, to some of these questions. Right. Uh, great. So some people are off to dinner. Good for you. Um, you are allowed to write notes, Emily, for the presentation. You can, you can have notes in front of you. You have four minutes to work through your presentation and notes, and then you, have, you can give yourself bullets. Your teacher is kind of helping you practice with training wheels on, which can be kind of good or with, with weights on, so to speak. Um, so one question I got here is, is the, how is the exam curved? The exam is not uh, curved officially, but they do create what are called cutoff scores. So at the end, once everything is sort of in, they take a look at, at, the, at the quality of the responses that they get. How should we research Spanish speaking countries? So Emily, that's a great question in the chat. Everyone in the chat type in for me, what country in Latin America or Spain or wherever that you know the most about, could be even a region of the United States that is a Spanish speaking community. So let me know in the chat, which one. My answer, you all know, is Spain. But of course, when I was a Spanish literature major in college, I studied Cuba, Puerto Rico, Mexico, uh, Uruguay, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Gabriel García Márquez, um, you know, Ana María Matupe, Juan Rufo, 
Jose Marti, um, basically all the Spanish. So we got Mexico, Argentina, Spain. Um, Brittany, you're asking about counter arguments in the essay, maybe Ecuador, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Colombia. And some of this is conditioned by um, the kinds of teachers you've had. Um, IDK Lowell is asking, ¿Dónde están mis mexicanos? Great question. Nicaragua, ¿Dónde están mis nicaragüenses? Um, Mexico, Chile, all these beautiful places of the, of the Spanish speaking world. And so embrace the one that you know, but if you want to, um, you can look up some uh, like basic cultural features, even just Googling around, um, but also check, take a look at your textbook. There might be parts of it that are like, you know, cultures and spotlight. And they'll be like, can you believe it? Things are different in Mexico. And they'll give you some of those specific detalles. The most important thing is not, do you have a master's degree and like, Uruguayan studies, the most important thing is like, are you able to get specific about a feature of Latin American life or Spanish life? So Victoria is asking what facts are good to know about your Spanish speaking country, things like family structures, things like cities, things like um, the schedules on which people eat, culture, habits, things that are different from your own community in the United States or other place. Um, so Sophia ended up on Zillow in Spain looking at real estate. It's interesting. And Jasmine, you're asking when you're going to know your scores. You're going to know them um, by July. So everyone, here's what I want to do. Y'all have some studying to do. I want you to check out the playlist on the Marco Learning YouTube channel that breaks down this information. I was here earlier showing you this. We're live in this, uh, which will be posted here, as well as these sessions that go over each part of this. And in just a couple of hours, you can get hopefully somewhere. We are going to be also going live uh, for AP World History and other subjects. So definitely subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, press that like button. And on our way out the door, I want you to give me an emoji for how you're feeling. It's gotta be a positive emoji, excitement, um, some, uh, sunglasses. The little, those of you who know Marco from Marco Learning, our fluffy dog, um, he is not with me right now, but on our world stream, I'm going to try to get him live. Give me an emoji. Is it like a little sheep for Marco? Is it a little four leaf clover for good luck? Um, and let me know if you've got any, um, I'm looking at these, uh, comments here. Yes. Emily's right. Guys, you're going to do amazing. Don't stress it. Right. Um, and if you've got questions after this is over too, you can add them as comments and I'll be checking in on this and adding some responses to those all through the evening to help you guys out. We want you to do great at Marco Learning. If you wanna join us after, uh, also don't, for, don't um, forget we're on Instagram and TikTok and let us know, actually let me know in the chat, do any of you follow us on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or somewhere else? I'm seeing by the way, the best emojis, so much fun money signs. I guess people are going to make money tomorrow. Um, yeah. And Ari, you're asking about, by the way, that cultural comparison. Don't, um, don't sweat it too much. There's only so much that you can memorize tonight, but I would say grab onto the one country you know the most about and try to be specific, try to get a por ejemplo. So I see some four leaf clovers and some real joy. So thank you all very much for watching tonight. I wish you buena suerte mañana. And yeah, it looks like some of you um, are doing this. For those of you who have questions um, or like want to follow up with some more, again, one last time, I'm going to show you this playlist. There's also this page, or this page, which is the exam page on the, on the AP Central. You'll see the 2020 21, the 2021 responses. You're going to see student responses with commentary. So I'm going to put this here for you all. Um, I would definitely say, like, go through. You can actually listen to student responses. So, buena suerte. Thank you all.